Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to John Harden High School for tonight's second semifinal action between the North Harden Trojans and the Elizabethtown Panthers. They will the winner of this game will play tomorrow morning in the championship game that was scheduled to start at 11 a.m. right back here at John Harden High School. For North Harden, they come in with a 19 and 17 record on the season, four and four in 17th district play. While the Panthers come in with a 25 and 11 record, seven and one in 17th district play. Go down the lineup for the Trojans to start off. Leading off will be Shane Fleming. He'll be followed by Caleb Riffle. Hitting third will be Manny Wimberly. Cleanup hitter is Travis Harper. Hitting fifth, fifth will be Jackson Linte. Hitting sixth, Caleb Trotta. Paxton Hardeman will hit seventh. He'll be followed by Jose Resto Santos. And rounding out the North Harden lineup will be Aiden Chamberlain. Defensively for the Panthers, starting in the outfield, Grayson Hayner will be in left field, Ryder Gregory in center field, and Carter Moberly will be in right field. Around the infield, Jake Williams is at third, Luke Presta plays shortstop, Jordan Price will be at second base, and Austin Jennings will be at first base. The battery tonight for the Panthers. Behind the dish will be Bryce Estes, and on the mound for Elizabethtown, Reed Sherrard. Sherrard comes in with a 6-2 and two record on the season. A 0 0.65 ERA. He has 77 strikeouts to just 16 walks on the year. These two teams met twice during the regular season. On April the 20th, E-Town took a 13-3 ball game. And then on May the 4th, the Panthers again victorious 14-4. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by. Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Blue Ribbon Renovations, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, E-Town Exterminating, and West Point Bank. We have our final pitches being made. And we do want to thank Mike McEwen, the tournament director here at John Harden High School. There was a lot of rain dumped on this field Wednesday and Thursday. They were able to get it into playing condition today. Just a little soggy behind the second base area. But the field is in very good condition. So we had to start the top of the first inning. It will be Shane Fleming, Caleb Riffle, and Manny Wimberley. Fleming comes to the plate, leadoff hitter playing second base, hitting 260 coming into tonight's ball game. That pitch outside. 1 and 0 the count. That one on the inside corner. Evens the count at one ball, one strike. That one in there for a strike. One and two now the count. Curveball stayed up. That'll even the count at two and two. One too far inside, and it goes full. Three balls and two strikes. That one low. And Fleming will get on base, draws the walk. Fleming, the biggest threat to steal. He's 21 of 22 on the season. Those will bring up the center fielder, Caleb Riffle. He comes in hitting 240 on the year. Throw.
throw over. Back in time. That one in there for a strike. I wouldn't want to count. Or if it looked like might be squaring around a bunt, possibly to sacrifice Fleming over to second. Squares around again. That curveball in there for a strike. 0 and 2 now the count. That one high. Fleming gets a good secondary lead after the pitch leaves the hands of Sherrard. Swing and a miss in the first out. In the inning is a strikeout for Sherrard. That's going to bring up the left fielder, Manny Wimberly. Wimberly comes in hitting 396 on the year. Two home runs. The wind has died down from our earlier game when we had 15 to 20 mile an hour sustained winds out to right field. It is still blowing, but just not as intense. Fleming takes off, gets a great jump, and there will be no throw down as he really stole that on the pitcher. He had three or four steps before Sherrard even started his windup. Estes doesn't throw it. It is a strike. 0-1 the count. Wimberly hits this one into foul territory. Jennings races over, has some room. Not, oh, he does make the catch for the out. Tagging up is Fleming, does a great job of reading it. And so right in the fence line. He, and what the coaches are going to say is the ball came out and hit the fence and then caught it. And so the umpires are going to convene. E-Town coaching staff comes across the field to check on Jennings, make sure he's okay. But immediately after the catch, the first base coach for the Trojans went to the home plate official and said the ball actually bounced off the fence, and then he reached up and caught it. And it's right in a, a part where there's a – it's almost out of play. They're going to call it a foul ball. So everybody will retreat. Fleming goes back to second. Count will be 0 and 2 to Wimberley. So if we come back, it'll be 0 and 2 to Wimberley. Wimberly asks for time. He'll step out. <laughs> this one's going to be hit towards third. It's inside the line. Fleming rounds third. It's coming home. There's going to be a play at the plate. Good throw in there. Estes not able to track it down, but Fleming scores in an RBI single for Manny Wimberly. We thought might have been out on that pop out. Gets the RBI single in the first run of the day, scored by the Trojans. That's going to bring up the cleanup hitter, Travis Harper. Harper comes to the plate, hitting 351 on the season. Low one and oh. In earlier today, our opening semifinal, Central Harden took care of Fort Knox 15 0. Fort Knox advanced after a crazy game last night against the John Harden Bulldogs, winning in eight innings, nine to seven. That pitch on the inside corner evens the count at one and one.
Swing and a miss. One and two now the count. That one low. Two and two now the count. And just as I say the wind had died down, now it picks back up. Going across the field from left field to right field. Watch any time the players move the dust that flies up. Swing and a miss, strike three. So two outs with the runner at second base. That's going to bring up the right fielder, Jackson Linte. Linte comes into the ball game hitting 311 on the year. High and tight, 1-0 and the count. A curveball in there for a strike. One and one the count. One and two now, the count is swing and a miss. Strike three. So Sherrard strikes out the side, but there was one run on one hit, one run left on base, and no Elizabethtown errors as we head to the bottom of the first inning. North Harden on top, 1-0 over Elizabethtown. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Blue Ribbon Renovations, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, E-Town Exterminating, and West Point Bank. Go down the lineup for the Panthers. Leading off will be Ryder Gregory. He'll be followed by Jordan Price. Grayson Hainer will hit third. Bryce Estes hits cleanup. Hitting fifth will be Austin Jennings. Carter Moberly will hit six. He's followed by Jake Williams. Hitting eighth will be Hendricks Thomas, and hitting ninth is Luke Presto. Defensively for the Trojans, Manny Wimberly will be in left field, Caleb Riffle in center, and Jackson Lente in right. Around the infield, Travis Harper will be at third base. Aiden Chamberlain plays shortstop. Shane Fleming will be at second. Paxton Hardeman will be at first base in the boundary tonight for the Trojans. Caleb Resto Santos behind the dish, and Caleb Trotta will be on the mound. Trotta comes into the game with a 6 and 1 record, 2.74 ERA, has 43 strikeouts to just 15 walks. In the winner of this game, we'll face the Central Harden Trojans tomorrow at 11 a.m., right back here at John Harden High School. So coming up to start the bottom of the first four of the Panthers, it'll be Ryder Gregory, Jordan Price, and Grayson Hayner. Ryder steps to the plate, 327 on the season. He'll hit from the left side. Swing and a miss on the outside fastball. 0-1-1 the count. That 
That one right back up, trying to get it. He'll come off the mound. It's over to Hardeman for the first down of the inning. That'll bring up the second baseman, Jordan Price. Price comes in hitting 330 on the year. I apologize from the press box. We're looking almost into the sun as it starts to set in center field. This will be hit out towards right field, slicing away from the right fielder. Lands in the corner, Price rounds first, heading for second base. Now he's going to round second, coming to third. Still don't have the ball back in. They're going to hold him at third, and it's a triple for Jordan Price. Ball just kept tailing and tailing away. Got away from Lente. So that's going to bring up the left fielder, Grayson Hayner. Hayner with the highest batting average for the starters on Elizabethtown, 435 on the year. Temperature has cooled down. It was near 90 earlier. Now we're down in the low 80s. Swing and miss on that one. Evens it up at one and one. Good job by Resto Santos. Keeps that one in front of him. Two and one now the count. Swing to miss on that one. Good fastball on the outside. Two and two now the count. Chokes up about an inch on his bat. That one in the dirt. And it'll go full. Get another good job by Resto Santos. Pops this one fouled straight back. Count remains three and two. That one gets away as it is a walk, and Price will stroll in, and we're all tied at one apiece. Hayner rates down to first base, but Rusto Santos got to the ball. We'll keep him there. So that's going to bring up the catcher, Bryce Estes. Estes hitting 407 on the season. On the season, Hayner 22 of 24 in stolen bases. Middle infielders playing it double play depth, throw over. Hayner back in time. Quick throw down, back is Hayner. And a balk was called. So no pitch. And I think it was he did not come set. So Hainer will be at second base. No pitch. So no count yet.
We hit towards the shortstop. Chamberlain gets it, races back. All he had to do was get to the bag first. It looked like Chamberlain beat Hayner back to the bag. Coach Adcock going to come out of the bench, talk to the umpire. I can say that Hayner beat Chamberlain to the bag. So there's a line out by Estes to Chamberlain. Due up now will be Austin Jennings, the first baseman for the Panthers. Comes in hitting 341 on the season. Coming to the plate, number 33, Jennings. The batter, Jennings. A little surprised that neither of the players <laughs> dove for the bag, trying to get back to it. Hayner actually ran past the bag and then dove back onto it. And Jennings asked for time and steps out. All tied at one apiece here in the bottom of the first inning. That one in the dirt. Want to know the count? Now Trana steps off. So we hit towards the second baseman. Fleming ranges over, gets it. Over to Hardeman for the third out. There was one run on one hit, one run left on base, and no North Harden errors. Through one complete, we're all tied at one apiece. This is a Hardin County Education and Community Television student production. HDC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by... Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. Blue Ribbon Renovations, offering 0% interest and no payments for 12 months on most home improvement projects. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff. E-Town Exterminating is a locally-owned, family-run pest control company. It's been serving the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976 and West Point Bank. Let us help make life simpler. Hometown banking made simple. Welcome back to John Horton High School for today's semifinal action as we head into the top of the second inning. Up for the Trojans, it'll be six, seven, eight in their lineup. Caleb Trotta, uh, Paxton Hardeman, and Jose Resto Santos. Sherrard remains on the mound for the Panthers. Trotta hitting 329 on the year. Swing to miss, strike one. Curveball in there for a strike. 0 and 2 now the count. And 
That one fouled straight back almost to us here in the press box. And there's a strikeout. Fourth strikeout of the day for Sherrard. Paxton Harderman now to the plate. He comes hitting 350 on the year. And in there for a strike, 0 and 1 the count. That went in there for a strike as well. After walking Fleming, the first batter of the game, really kind of under control. He's getting strikes with a curveball and fastball. That one fastball is high. And one and two now the count. Who strike three. Another good curveball. And so with two outs, we'll come to the catcher, Jose Risto Santos, for the Trojans. Comes in hitting 274 on the season. Pitch in there for a strike. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2 now the count. So the other batters that he has gotten at 0 and 2 count, he usually goes high fastball. That was a low one. Hit over towards third under the glove or off the glove of Williams. So are we going with a hit or an error on the play? Coming to the so we have a single by Jose Resto Santos, and now Chamberlain, the, uh, the shortstop. We do have a courtesy runner at first base. Let's see if we can get the number on that player. I think it's five, which would be Yates. Throw over, not in time. Dalton Yates, the courtesy runner at first for Resto Santos. Bunt towards third, good play. Williams up with it, across the diamond, not in time. That'll be an infield hit for Chamberlain. Really well executed bunt as Williams was back past the third base when he laid it down. So Yates will be at second, Chamberlain at first, and we go back to the top of the order for the Trojans, Shane Fleming coming to the plate. He reached on a walk, stole second, and came around to score the first run of the game. Jennings won't hold on at first. That's a ball. For Charity, really threw that one. His defense was out of position. Presta had just broke towards second base at shortstop, and actually Jennings had broke towards first base. Big holes. Now they're going to throw to second as they thought they had Yates. The ball gets away. Yates is going to get up and take off for third. Throw going to come in, not in time, as Price tried to make the throw. So on the error, the throwing error, that will get Yates over to third, and he's just a pass ball away from scoring. Chamberlain that stayed at first, he's got a big lead. Wouldn't be surprised they try to pick over there. Now he comes back just a little. Now he's back another step. They're going to fake to first. Immediately, the first base coach comes out and says, if he steps towards third, you immediately come back. Because actually, he started to shuffle away from first base. 
There's the pitch. Bunt right back to Sherrard, and he'll flip it over to first for the third out of the inning. So there were no runs on two hits, two runners left on base, and one Elizabethtown error as we head to the bottom of the second inning. Our score tied one apiece between North Harden and Elizabethtown. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel One program is sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates, Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. Blue Ribbon Renovations, offering 0% interest and no payments for 12 months on most home improvement projects. To explore your op options, call 270-763-3186. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff. Call 270-982-7206 to talk to someone about scrapping metal and recycling. Etan Exterminating is a locally owned, family run pest control company. It's been serving the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976. Call 270 737 6900 or go online at mugabug.com. And West Point Bank, with five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point. Let us help make life simpler. Hometown banking made simple online at westpointbank.com. So we head to the bottom of the second inning for the Panthers. It'll be six, seven, eight in their lineup. Carter Moberly, Jake Williams, and Hendricks Thomas. Caleb Trotto will remain on the mound for the Trojans. I think the umpire's gonna call a sun delay. I think it's more because he and the catcher could not see the pitches coming in. We'll be back when we get back to playing field or playing. So they're going to take a sun delay. The sun will have to, it's probably going to take about 15 or 20 minutes. Sun will get down behind the trees, and then we'll crank it back up. It's just a safety concern for hitters, the catcher, and the umpire. So we will be back shortly. Welcome back to John Harden High School for the semifinals of the 17th District Baseball Tournament. Our sun delay is over, the officials have said. It's safe to play. Now for us in the press box, it's still a little difficult as the sun is still above the tree lines out in center field. So we come back to play. It'll be the bottom of the second inning. Our sc uh, score is tied. North Harden one, uh, E-Town one. Scoring tonight, Shane Fleming led off the ball game with a walk. He then stole second and then was brought in on a single by Manny Wimberley. For Elizabethtown, Jordan Price scored. He had a triple and then on a passed ball actually scored to tie it up. So as we come back to action, Cardi Carter Moberly will be at the plate. This is first at bat of the ball game. Comes in with a 295 average on the season. Caleb Trotta on the mound for the Trojans. That one stays high, 1-0. Swinging a miss on that one evens the count at one ball, one strike. That one goes outside, two and one. This one out towards the shortstop. Chamberlain range is over. Scoop across the diamond to Hardeman for the first out of the inning. That's going to bring up the third baseman for the Panthers. Jake Williams comes in with a 242 average on the year. The 
Williams hitting from the left side. Swings at that one, hit out towards Hardeman. Gets in on two hops, and he'll step on the bag for the second out of the inning. So with two outs, we'll get to the designated hitter for the Panthers, Hendricks Thomas, hitting 229 on the year. Fouled out of play. 0 and 1 the count. A curveball fouled out of play also. 0 and 2 now the count. You know, as the sun sets, the temperatures have dipped into the 70s. Wind has died down a little bit, still blowing across the field. That one right back up off of Trotta. Gathers himself with the ball quickly over to Hardeman for the third out of the inning. So a 1-2-3 inning for the Panthers. No runs, no hits, no errors. No runners left on base as we head to the top of the third inning. Our score remains North Harden 1, Elizabethtown 1. This is a Harden County Educational and Community Television Student production, HCC TV, is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored by Brandenburg Telecom. Physical Therapy Associates, Blue Ribbon Renovation, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, E-Town Exterminating, and West Point Bank. We'll be right back with the top of the third inning. Welcome back to John Harden High School for today's semifinal action in the baseball tournament. It's our second semifinal game of the day in the earlier matchup. Central Harden Bruins defeated Fort Knox Eagles 15-0, and they move on to tomorrow game, tomorrow morning's championship game. we here at 11 o'clock. We will have that for you here on HCC TV. Curveball in there for a strike. It'll be... 2-3-4 in the Trojan lineup. Caleb Riffle, Manny Wimberly, and Travis Harper. Reed Sherrard still on the mound for the Trojans. That one too low. Evens it up at 1-1. One and one. This one hit high in the air near second base. Price drifting out. Makes the catch. First out of the inning. That'll bring up the left fielder, Manny Wimberly. Wimberly one for one on the day with an RBI single. And he comes in with a 396 average on the season. One to know the count. Sherrard works quickly. Swing and a miss. One and one now the count. Hey, 
Curveball, this one popped up on the infield as well. Price calls for it and makes the Hold on one moment. Travis Harper now to the plate. Harper 0 for 1 on the day with a strikeout. Comes in hitting 351 on the season. Curveball in there for a strike. Schwartz had a good control today, both on his fastball and his curveball. 0 and 2 the count. That one low. Good miss pitch. One and two now the count. That will be fouled off down the third baseline. Players down in the bullpen pick it up. That one in the dirt. Two and two now the count. Good eye by Harper. Swing and a miss, strike three. And so one, two, three inning for the Trojans. No runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left on base as we head to the bottom of the third. Score remains North Harden one, Elizabethtown one. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel One programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates. More personal attention for more effective results. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. Blue Ribbon Renovations. Offering 0% interest and no payments for 12 months on most home improvement projects. To explore your options, call 270-763-3186. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff. Call 270-982-7206 to talk to someone about scrappy metal and recycling. E-Town Exterminating is a locally-owned, family-run pest control company that's been serving Hardin, Mead, Grayson, and Nelson counties in the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976. Call 270-737-6900 or go online at mugabug.com. In West Point Bank with five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point. Online at westpointbank.com. So we head to the bottom of the third inning for the Panthers. It'll be 9-1-2 in the lineup. Luke Presta, Reiner Gregory, and Jordan Price. Caleb Trotter will be back on the mound for the Trojans. Luke Preston makes his way to the batter's box. Preston comes in hitting 274 on the season. A pitch low, 1-0. going to be hit down the line. It's going to stay fair. Wimberly chasing after it. Pressed it around first, heading for second base. And it's going to be, he slides in, but it would have been a stand-up double. A leadoff double for the Panthers. That will send us to the top of the order. Ryder Gregory to the plate. Gregory 0 for 1 on the day, grounded out in his first at-bat. Comes into tonight's ball game, hitting 327. And he will hit from the left side. Second baseman Shane Fleming playing closer to first than he is second, kind of anticipating that it could be a bunt here. Hardeman on the grass. It is a bunt attempt or squared around. He didn't attempt after the ball, but the pitch was a strike. 
And if you're Gregory and you're going to bunt this ball, you want to bunt it towards the third baseman, make him come and make a play or make the pitcher come off the mound. Bunting it to first base, the first baseman can see the runner in front of him, knows if he can make the play or not. That curveball a little too far inside. That evens it up at one and one. It's this one towards Hardeman. Hardeman's only play is to go step on third. So Gregory does his job. It's kind of a sacrifice, but not officially. That moves Presta just 90 feet away from scoring the go-ahead run. And that's going to bring up Jordan Price. Price is one for one on the day. A triple and then came in to score the lone Panther run. The North Arden infielders all playing in a little bit. And if, it's, if it's hit hard, do you cut him off at home? If it's hit to the corners, they definitely will. A curveball in there for a strike. Like Price was taking the whole way. So he was almost stepping out of the batter's box as the ball got to him. That one away. Oh, say they swung 0 oh 2. Price chokes up a little on his bat. This one popped up. That'll go out of play. Might land on the press box. Misses. Coach Bell was going to dive in front of us and stop it if it got up here. Trying to back toes the rubber. 0-2 the count to Price. One out, runner at third. Fouls that one off. There's a section over here at John Harden that the school does not own. It's beyond the right field fence here. I bet you there is a mint of money worth of baseballs and softballs back there. Count remains 0-2. This one back up the middle. Gets under the glove. It's going to be a single and an RBI for Price. He's now 2-for-2 two two on the day in E-Town. Goes up by one run as Presta scores. So that will bring up Grayson Hayner now for the Panthers. Hayner 0 for 0. He walked in his first at Batty. Trotter then committed a balk and got him to second. He was stranded there in the first inning. Price on the year, 18 of 19 in stolen bases. This is going to be hit towards right field. Lente going back. It's going to get over his head. Rounding second is Price. And Coach Greenwell is going to send him. They get it to Fleming. He wasn't really ready for the throw to go home. A lack of communication and telling him where the ball needed to go to. But it's going to be an RBI triple by Grayson Hayner. And now E-Town up by two runs as Price comes in. Bryce Estes now to the plate. He lined out to the shortstop and is only a bat 0 for 1 on the day. Came in hitting 407 on the, the season. That one catches the outside corner. That one hits Estes on the elbow. He'll sprint down to first base. So we'll have runners at the corners with one out. That's going to bring up Austin Jennings. And we're going to have a courtesy runner for Estes. Be number 11. So Noah Brown will be at first base. And he'll be the courtesy runner again. Pitchers and catchers get courtesy runners. To hopefully speed up the game. 
Jennings steps in. Jennings 0 for 1 on the day. They ground out to the second baseman to end the first inning. There's a big hole to the right side now as Hardiman has to hold on. Brown and then Fleming is playing at double play depth. Ball in the dirt. Good job by Resto Santos again. Keeping the ball in front of him. Keeps Brown at first and keeps Hainer at third. Over each time, you really want Jennings to pull this ball. Throw over to first. Hardeman gets it on the bounce. Throw over again. Brown dives back in safely. Count one and zero. Oh. Jennings steps back into the batter's box. That's hit hard down the line. Hooking foul though. There's some fans down there that might go track that down for us. One and one in the count. Get another ball. We thought the umpire was coming back to talk to us. Throw over to first. Brown again dives back in. This one's skied up. This one might stay in. Resto Santos throws the mask, comes over, gets into the bleachers. So the count will go to one and two. Here at John Harden, there is a lot of room in foul territory. I believe the only field that has more in our district is Fort Knox. That one fouled off. Count remains one and two. Taking his time to tow the rubber. Now he steps in. Jennings backs out, and he'll step back in. <laughs> and Brown leads away from first base. Hainer at third. They're going to throw to third. Hainer back on. Popped up. This one will be in play. It's going to go into left field. Wimberly coming in. Hayner not even going to attempt to tag. Wimberly with a big arm in left field. That ball a little too shallow. So with two outs and runners at the corners, it'll be Carter Moberly to the plate. Moberly 0 for 1 on the day. Grounded out and is only at bat. Came into the ball game hitting 295. Resto Santos will go out. Most likely, they're going to talk about what to do with the runners at the corners if E-Town tries to put a play on. Making sure that everybody is on the same page. And now it'll be Ace Hancock coming out of the Trojan dugout. So to recap the 17th district so far, 
Our quarterfinal game that was supposed to be played on Wednesday was moved to Thursday because of all of the rain that was here at John Harden. We moved it then to the sports park in Elizabethtown as a turf infield. We were able to get the game in, but we didn't start on time. We actually didn't start until last night about 8 o'clock. At 10 o'clock, we were in the sixth inning when the lights went out in the stadium. Took about 25 minutes to bring those back up. Shortly after that, there was a collision on the field um, that stopped the game for another 15 minutes or so. And from there, we ended up going to extra innings. Fort Knox ended up defeating John Harden 9-7 to seven in eight innings. And then this earlier today, 5.30 start time, Central Harden and Fort Knox squared off. Central Harden took control early in that ball game and defeated the Eagles 15-0 in four innings. So they will move on to tomorrow's championship game at 11 a.m. Curveball in there for a strike, 0-1. And both teams that make it to the district final tomorrow will both make it to the region tournament. That's going to be fouled out of play. On Monday, we will start the 17th District Softball Tournament. We'll have the 4-5 game on Monday. Then we'll have our semifinals on Tuesday and championship game on Wednesday. That will come to you from North Harden. 0-2 the count to Moverly. That's going to be hit to right field. That's going to be a base hit. That's going to score at least one as Gr Hainer comes in. And then Coach Greenwell going to put the brakes on Brown. It will be an RBI double for Carter Moberly. And Etown now leads 4-1 to one over North Harden. That's going to bring Jake Williams to the plate. Williams 0 for 1 with the ground out. He'll be the eighth batter of the inning for the Panthers. Fifth Region Baseball Tournament will be held at Hart County next week and then for the softball fifth region that will be held at LaRue County if any of the 17th district representatives make it to the championship game we will cover that game on a tape delay basis the so runners at second and third two outs so we hit or near shortstop Chamberlain goes out makes the catch the final out of the inning, but the Panthers able to push one, three runs across on three hits. There were two runners left on base and no North Harden errors. So after three complete, our score, Elizabethtown four, North Harden one. We'll be back in just a few moments for the fourth inning of action. Welcome back to John Harden for the 17th District Tournament. Semi-final action as we head to the top of the fourth inning. For the Trojans, it'll be 5-6-7, Jackson Lente, Caleb Trana, and Paxton Hardeman. Reed Sherrard remains on the mound for the Panthers. As 
Swing to that one. 0 and 1. Again, Schrager's done a really good job keeping these North Harden hitters off balance. Good control with both his fastball and his curveball. There's the curveball that's going to be hit towards center field. Gregory came in a few steps. Now gives a little ground. Makes the catch for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Caleb Trotta. Trotta 0 for 1 on the day. Came into the ball game hitting 329. Gerard on the day, six strikeouts through three and a third innings. That one low, one and oh. Trotta digs back in. It's in there for a strike. One out here in the top of the fourth. There's ball four. Trotta will trot down. That is the first walk issued by Sherrod since the first batter, Shane Fleming, of the ball game. Paxton Hardeman now to the plate. Paxton 0 for 1 on the day with a strikeout. Came into the ball game hitting 350 on the season. Trotter will run for himself. That's in there for a strike. 0 and 1. Throws over, trying to back in time. Probably a little closer than the coaching staff wanted it to. Curveball in there for a strike, 0 and 2 now the count. Fouled straight back. Count remains. No balls and two strikes. Pitch outside. Two and two now the count. Trotter with the average lead at first. That pitch low. Three and two now the count. It's 0 and 2, and Hardeman has worked it back to full. That'll be fouled out of play. Being hit high in the air out towards left field. Hainer traveling over. Make the catch. And Trotter will retreat back to first base. So two outs, runner at first. As we bring up the catcher, Jose Resto Santos. Resto Santos, one for one on the day and a single. Came in hitting 274 on the season. So 
So now towards second base. Price up with it. Over to Jennings in time. So there were no runs on no hits. One runner left on base and no Elizabethtown errors. As we head to the bottom of the fourth inning, our score, Elizabethtown on top, 4-1 to one over North Harden. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results with locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Rancliffe, and South Louisville, online at physicaltherapyky.com. Blue Ribbon Renovations, offering 0% interest and no payments for 12 months on windows, doors, fences, roofs, decks, siding, and much, much more. To explore your options or schedule your appointment today, call 270-763-3186. Wandell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff available for all your recycling needs. Located in Elizabethtown on 31W, just south of exit 91 off Interstate 65. Call 270-982-7206 to talk to someone about scrapping metal and recycling. E-Town Exterminating is a locally owned family-run pest control company and has been serving Hardin, Meade, Grayson, and Nelson counties in the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976. Whatever your pest control issues are, termites, spiders, crickets, general pests, even moles, their team has the knowledge, skill, and training to safely and effectively eliminate the problem. Call 270-737-6900 or go online at mugabug.com. And West Point Bank with five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, up in Glendale and West Point. Let us help make life simpler. Hometown banking made simple online at westpointbank.com. As we head to the bottom of the fourth inning, it'll be 8-9-1 in the Panther lineup. Hendricks Thomas, Luke Presta, and Ryder Gregory. Caleb Trotter will remain on the mound for the Trojans. As Thomas makes his way up. 0 for 1 on the day as he grounded back to the pitcher. Came into tonight's ball game hitting 229. That's going to be ripped back up, right up the center field. Base hit for Thomas. So it'll be at first as we get to Luke Presta. Luke Presta let off the last inning with a double. He's one for one on the day. He came around and scored the second run for the Panthers. Thomas with a average lead over at first. Shot to come set. Preston's going to square around a bunt. Snap throw down. Hendricks back in time. Pitch was a ball. 1 0 the count. Preston again looks like he might square around a bunt. Nope. Swing and a miss. One and one now the count. Now in this situation, if you were going to bunt, you want to bunt this one at the first baseman whose back is further. The third baseman, Harper, is cheated in. He's on the grass. Quick throw over to first, not in time. Throw over again. Thomas back in time. Press the squared around that time. The curveball stayed high. Two and one now the count. Presta does bunt this one towards the first base side. Trotter comes over, unable to get to it. It's going to be an infield single for Preston. He's two for two on the day. Hendricks Thomas will get out to second, so we'll hand to the top of the order for the Panthers. Ryder Gregory coming to the plate, no outs. Runners at first and second. Gregory 0 for 2 on the day, a pair of ground outs. Looks like the Trojans expect Gregory to bunt as Fleming has moved over again. 
Closer to first than he is second. Does bunt right out in front. Resto Santos with it. He'll throw it down to first. Fleming is covering. So they get the out and the sacrifice by Gregory. The 2-4 put out, but that will advance the runners. Hendricks Thomas now at third and Luke Presta at second. That's going to bring up Jordan Price. Price two for two on the day. It's a single and a triple. RBI and two runs scored. And the North Harden defense all coming in on the grass. Got to cut down the run at the plate. Now fouled straight back. Dirt. Mr. Santos again does a good job of keeping it nearing. That one he actually blocked and it went towards the third base dugout, but it was in a place where Hendricks Thomas was not going to be able to advance up on. Mr. Santos probably saved two or three runs today just doing that. Good job blocking behind the plate. That one low. Two and one the count. That one low. Three and one now the count to price. Sitting on deck is Grayson Hayner for the Panthers. Got some action down in the North Harden bullpen. Ball four. So the bases are loaded with one out. And it'll now be Grayson Hayner coming to the plate. Hayner one for one on the day with this RBI single and a run scored. He also reached on a walk. Painter's able to get a hit here. Might be the end of the pitching day for Caleb Trotta. That ball outside, want to know the count. This one hit high in the air by the second baseman. Fleming goes out, makes the catch. Henderson Thomas started to act like he was going to tag up. Retreats back to third. So two outs and the base is loaded, and that will bring up Bryce Estes, the catcher for the Panthers. He's 0 for 1 on the day. He lined out and was hit by a pitch. Came into the ballgame hitting 4.07. That's in there for us, trying good curve ball to start off for Trana. 0-1. With the bases loaded, he will throw from the windup. Big lead at second by Presta. Wind still blowing out towards right field. Just not as hard as it was earlier. This is going to be hit towards center field, tailing away from Riffle. That's one's going to get down at the base of the fence. One run is in, two runs are in. Here comes the third. 
The throw not going to be there, and it's a three-run double by Bryce Estes. As Hendricks Thomas, Luke Presta, and Jordan Price all score for Elizabethtown, and now it is a 7-1 lead for Elizabethtown. And here comes Coach Ace Hancock for the Trojans. Trotta is listed as the pitcher in DH, so when he comes out, he will stay in the batting order. And we will see who will be coming in for him. Try to catch a number on this one. It's number 18 on the roster. That would be Drake Bell. Bell, 2-4, two, two and 4 on this season. He's pitched in 39 innings. He has a 5.74 ERA, 47 strikeouts to 18 walks. So E-Town scored one run in the opening inning. In, in the third inning, we were able to put three across the board, and they put three across the board here in the fourth. For the Trojans, they have just the one run that came in the first inning. And our score to seven to one. Again, tomorrow morning, we will have the championship ball game here on HCC TV. It'll be a special time at 11 in the morning. Central Harden has already punched their ticket. They defeated Fort Knox in our earlier semifinal game, 15-0 in four innings. We're in the fourth inning, two outs. And now coming to the plate will be Austin Jennings. <laughs> Jennings 0 for 2 on the day as a ground out and a fly out. from the stretch and he steps off. <laughs> Resto Santos now going to go out and talk to Bell. It could be that they've got a different in sign. Usually when a runner's at second base, it's a different set of signs or a different um, kind of sign that it could be touches. Uh, it could be grab the face mask means something, touch the chest means something else. It could also be fingers. It could be uh, the first two are not going to be called. We'll, we'll call the third number. An umpire going to stroll out there, break up this meeting. So now we're set. Jennings digs in. That one's hips home again. Resto Santos again keeps the ball in front of him, keeps the runner at second. The courtesy runner again, Noah Brown for Estes. I'll be fouled off over near the first base dugout. One and 
on the count. Oh, and outside, two and one. Curveball stayed outside. Three and one now the count. That one in the dirt. Mr. Santos keeps it in front of him, but Brown, aggressive on the base pass, will get to third on the wild pitch. And it'll be a walk for Austin Jennings. So there'll be runners at the corners with two outs. That's going to bring up Carter Moberly. He's one for two on the day. It's an RBI double, the ground out. I believe we're going to have a pinch runner for Austin Jennings. I'll have to see who this is on the E Town bench. Number 17, Nolan. Hagman. So it'll be Brown at third, Hagman at first. As Moberly steps back into the batter's box. Let me hit towards the center field. That's going to fall in for a base hit, and one runner is in. Moberly back-to-back -back base hits and RBIs as Brown gets in. And so Hagman at second base, Moberly at first. And the Panthers now up 8-1. to one. As This brings up Jake Williams. He was 0 for 2 on the day as a ground down and a fly out. Came into the tonight's ball game hitting 242. Curveball stays outside, 1 0. in the dirt, 2-0 now oh the count. It's going to be ripped out to right field and base hit for Williams. Rounding third is Hagman. Ball gets away. Hagman in. Moberly at third base. So the Panthers bat around here in the fourth inning. So an RBI single for Williams. And now Hendricks Thomas comes to the plate. Thomas one for two on the day. As he ground out and had a single to lead off this inning. And a run scored. That one gets away. Everybody will say, well, not everybody. Williams will trot down to second base. So now two runners in scoring position. Bell, I believe it's two out of the last three pitches. Hat's fallen off after... Stone the pitch. 2 0 the count as Thomas steps back in. That one down low, 3 0. That 
It's in there for a strike on the inside corner. Strike two. Thomas thought he'd drawn a walk. It's a slow roller out towards Fleming. Misplays it and beats it out. The E4 scores a run as Moberly. So Moberly is in. Williams will be at third. Runners at the corners. So Luke Preston now to the plate. Preston two for two on the day as a double and a single. Two runs scored. Score now 10 to one. Throw over. Ball got away from Hardeman. That's in there for a strike. Go and won the count. Curveball stayed up. Evens the count at one and one. This is Luke Preston, number nine hitter. That one fouled off. One and two now the count. in that foul ball. Strike three. And that will end the inning. But Elizabethtown able to put six runs across on three hits. There were two errors on North Harden and two runners left on base. As we head to the top of the fifth inning, E-Town on top, 10-1 to 1 over North Harden. This is a Harden County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC-TV is a division of Harden County Schools. Live programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Blue Ribbon Renovations, Von Ells Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, E-Town Exterminating, and West Point Bank. Welcome back to John Harden High School for our semifinal action in the 17th District Baseball Tournament. As we head into the top of the fifth inning, it'll be 9-1-2 in the Trojan order. Aiden Chamberlain, Shane Fleming, and Caleb Riffle. Reed Sherrard remains on the hill for the Panthers. Chamberlain steps in. He's one for one on the day with a single. Swing and a miss. So one won the count. In tomorrow, back here at 11 a.m., start of the ball game. It's supposed to be in the low 80s. No rain expected tomorrow either. Again, Monday, we will have the 17th District softball tournament starting. 
Monday will be our 4-5 game. Tuesday, the semifinals, and Wednesday, the championship game. Those will all be at North Harden. So we head out towards right field. Mobily moving over. Camps under it. Makes the catch. The first out of the inning. That will take us to the top of the lineup for the Trojans. Shane Fleming. Comes to the plate. Fleming 0 for 1 on the day. Did reach on a walk. Has a stolen base. And the lone run scored for the Trojans. That one outside. 1 to know the count. in there for a strike. That'll even it up at one and one. That's in there for a strike. One and two. That one stays high and tight. Two and two now the count. Count goes full, three balls and two strikes. That'll be fouled out of play. Fleming hangs in there. That'll be a base hit into right center field. So. So with two outs, runner at first, or sorry, one out, runner at first base, Caleb Riffle comes to the plate. Riffle 0 for 2 on the day as a strikeout and a flyout. Came into today's ball game hitting 240. Down nine runs. I don't know if you send Fleming. He has a stolen base today. He's 22 out of 23 on the season. That's an average lead. Shuffles out one more. That pitch in there for a strike. That one in the dirt. Good job by Estes keeping that in front of him. Fleming will stay at first. That pitch too low. One and one the count. in there for a strike. And stay tuned. At the completion of this game, we will have two players named to the all-tournament team. They will join Larry McKnight from John Hart. That one hit hard down the line to left field. It's going to be in the park. Going back on it is Hayner. Fleming going to round third. He's heading in. His second run of the day. And they just eat it at second base. And so an RBI double by Caleb Riffle. And now that will bring up Manny Wimberly, left fielder for the Trojans. He's one for two on the day as an RBI single and a fly out. To finish my earlier thought, the... All tournament team, Larry McKnight from John Harden, Joe Smith, and Isaiah Morrison from Fort Knox. That's in there for a strike. Half time. I believe the officials were out of position. So now they move over. One 
in the dirt. One and one now the count to Wimberley. Swing and a miss. One and two now the count. And Riffle at second base. Strike three, tipped it, but it, Estes able to catch it. That's the first strikeout for Sherrard in two innings, now a seven on the night. So with two outs, Travis Harper now comes to the plate. Harper 0 for 2 on the day with two strikeouts. Came into the ballgame hitting 351. they will have a runner at second. Pitch inside, 1-0 oh the count. That one hit Harper on the elbow. So hit my pitch. He'll trot down to first. So there'll be runners at first and second as we get to Jackson Lente. Lente 0 for 2 on the day as a strikeout and a fly out. Swing and a miss on that one. 0 and 1 the count. That pitch outside. That'll even it up at 1 and 1. Coming into today's ball game, Lente hitting 311 on the season. I'll be fouled out of play. One and two now the count. Swing and a miss in the dirt. I'm gonna throw down to make sure he's out. So there was one run on two hits. Two runners left on base and no Elizabethtown errors as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Our score, Elizabethtown 10, North Harden 2. This is a Harden County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Harden County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. Blue Ribbon Renovations, offering 0% interest and no payments for 12 months on most home improvement projects. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff. Ethan Exterminating is a locally-owned, family-run pest control company, has been serving the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976. And West Point Bank, let us help make life simpler. Hometown banking made simple. Bell will remain on the hill for the Trojans as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. For the Panthers, it'll be one, two, three in their lineup. Ryder Gregory, Jordan Price, and Grayson Hayner. Again, we're back here at John Harden tomorrow for the championship game. First pitch scheduled for 11 a.m. Ryder Gregory to the plate. Ryder Gregory 0 for 2 on the day. Has three ground outs. He actually also has a sacrifice on the day.
Bunts this one towards third. That'll be foul. 0-1 the count. Catches the inside corner, one and two now the count. That one fouled off. Count remains one and two. Too far inside. That'll even it up at two and two. That one too far inside, and we'll go full. Three balls and two strikes. Actually, they're going to say it hit Gregory. So he will trot down. To first, I think Coach Adcox asking if he was hit by a pitch. So runner at first base, no outs. Jordan Price to the plate. Price two for two on the day as an RBI three runs scored. That's a single, a triple, and also was on, on a walk. They might check to see. What I had to count at three balls and two strikes after the inside pitch. And so I assumed that he was hit my pitch as Gregory went down to first base. So it is. Gregory's going to come back. Counts three balls and two strikes. So, you know, it did not hit him. So now i got to go back and erase all of my artwork on my scorebook. Uh, that one fouled off. Hangs in there. That one, ball four. Now Gregory will race down there. The ball got away from Resto Santos. It'll be a walk. I get to draw my lines back. Okay, I'll so now Jordan, Jordan Price will come to the plate. Again, Price, two for two on the day. A single, a triple, an RBI, and three runs scored. Also reached on a walk. Gregory, 30 of 33 attempts and stolen bases this season. Average lead, and he'll take off. Pitch outside, Resto Santos throw back towards the first base side. Fleming does a good job to knock it down. It'll be a stolen base for Gregory. It's 31st of the season. So now a runner in scoring position. That pitch was a ball, so it's 1-0 and oh the count. Hardeman playing as if he thinks that Price might bunt the ball here. That one down, 2-0. and oh. A 
pitch is in there for a strike. Two and one now the count. Now the North Harden defense sets back to more like normal play. Hardeman even with the bag. Swing and a miss. Good fastball on the outside part of the plate from Bell. That'll even it up at two and two. Almost looked like Price might have been expecting something off speed there. And then tried to speed up and catch up to the fastball. That one is off speed. But strikeout that catches the inside corner. First out of the inning. And I'll bring us to Grayson Hayner. Hayner one for two on the day is an RBI single and a run scored. Also reached on a walk. Pitch in the dirt, gets away from Resto Santos. Gregory reads it and gets down. And now the ball gets away from Harper, and Gregory will come around and score. So for a walk, he then gets on a wild pitch and then an E2. He scores to make the score 11 to 2. Elizabethtown on top. So the bases will be cleared now for Hayner. One to know the count. Pitch outside, 2-0. Oh. And it almost feels like the wind now is blowing in our face. Check <laughs> swing there. Goes right to Hardeman. He just steps on first base for the second out of the inning. That's going to bring us to the catcher, Bryce Estes. Estes one for two on the day. He had a three RBI double and a run scored in the fourth inning. He also was hit by a pitch and lined out in his first at bat. It's going to be hit out towards center field. Going back on it is Riffle. He'll make the catch for the third out of the inning. So for the Panthers, there was one run on no hits. No runners left on base and one North Harden error as we head to the sixth inning, E-Town on top, 11-2 to two over North Harden. This is a Harden County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC-TV is a division of Harden County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Blue Ribbon Renovations, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, E-Town Exterminating, and West Point Bank. We'll be right back with the sixth inning of play. Welcome back for the sixth inning of play. Top of the sixth, it'll be six, seven, eight in the lineup for the Trojans. Caleb Trotta, Paxton Hardeman, and Jose Resto Santos. Reed Sherrard remains on the mound for the Panthers. Strike, fastball from Sherrard. 
in the late innings when you have a lead like this, you want the first pitch to be a strike every time. They're going to check on that one. He went around 0-2 now the count. Trying to 0 for 1 on the day as a strikeout. He did reach on a walk in his last at bat. That pitch low. 1 and 2 the count. That pitch outside. Again, just missing on those. Now when he would come back with a two and two, he's going to try, I think he'll throw a fastball inside part of the plate. And there it is. And a base hit. Good job is trying to fist that one out into the outfield. So he leads off the inning with a single. That's going to bring up the first baseman, Paxton Hardiman. Hardiman 0 for 2 on the day as a strikeout and a fly out. Swings at the first pitch that's been popped up. Price going out. Moberly coming in. It will be Price that takes it. The first out of the inning recorded. That will bring us to the catcher, Jose Resto Santos. One for two on the day. They single in a ground out. Swing and a miss. 0 and 1 the count. That pitch too far inside. Evens it up at 1 and 1. Average lead at first. That one's going to be ripped. Single into left center field. Might be more than that. Gregory races over. He'll cut that off, gets it back in. Just a single. So Trotter will move up to second base. As Rusto Santos now two for three on the day. And that will bring up Aiden Chamberlain. The shortstop. He's one for two on the day as a single in the fly out. And I believe we're going to have courtesy runner at first base for Rusto Santos. Number nine, let me check my stat sheet here. Number nine is Mason Howard. So Trotta at second, Howard at first. Chamberlain steps to the plate. That one low, Estes good job blocking that one. Keeps the runners where they are. in the dirt. 3-0 and now the count. And Estes, who even had control in this inning, now struggling a little bit with his control. He goes 3-0 and to Chamberlain. That's in there for strength. Chamberlain came into today's ball game hitting 224 for the Trojans. That's in there for a strike. Works it back full. Three balls and two strikes. One out. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Caleb Trotta out at second base. Mason Howard at first. This ball hit hard to center field. Gregory going to move back a little bit. Moves back quicker. Makes the catch. And Trotta did not tag up. And I am a little surprised at that. Just to the fact that. Gregory has a good arm, but he's running away from third base. Didn't get set up in front of it. Actually was catching it while he was still moving. And an easy uh, tag up would have been in place. But the second out of the inning made, and we head to the top of the order. Shane Fleming now at bat. Fleming 1-4-2 on the day. He's got two runs scored. Curveball stays high. 1-0. Go 
good fastball that time. Swing and a miss from Fleming. Evens it up at one and one. Swing and a miss. One and two. So we're going to miss strike three. And so Sherrard works his way out of two runners on with only one out. There were no runs on two hits, two runners left on base, and no Elizabethtown Panther errors as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. E-Town on top, 11-2 to two over North Harden. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC-TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. Blue Ribbon Renovations, offering 0% interest and no payments for 12 months on most home improvement projects. One L's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff. E-Town Exterminating is a locally owned family run pest control company. It's been serving the surrounding areas since 1976. And West Point Bank, let us help make life simpler. Hometown banking made simple. We do have a pitching change for the Trojans. I believe this was number 25. That would be Austin Elms. Elms, this will be his ninth game, ninth appearance, 27 innings. He's 2-0 and on the season with a 4.41 ERA, 23 strikeouts to 22 walks. Throw from the left side, like a three-quarter sidearm. Do up for the Panthers in the sixth inning. It'll be 5-6-7 in the lineup. Austin Jennings, Carter Moberly, and Jake Williams. So it'll be Austin Jennings who heads up to the plate for the Panthers. Jennings 0 for 2 on the day. Did reach on a walk back in the fourth innings and came around to score. Also has a grounder and a fly out. So Elm's on the mound now. Lefty, again, a little three-quarter to sidearm action. If you're left-handed hitter, a ball coming from the sidearm, you really want to drive it the opposite way. Try to uh, pull the pitch. Usually it catches you on the end of the bat. and doesn't put a whole lot on it. I say that, and Jennings could just hit a home run. So Resto Santos goes out, talks to his pitcher. And usually it's about the signs or how they plan on pitching a certain pitcher or hit a hitter. That one away. Evens it up at one and one. No, that one actually goes off of Jennings' foot in the batter's box, so it'll be a foul ball. One and two now, the count. Umpire will walk over and ask Jennings if he's doing okay.
Strike three on the inside corner with the curveball. Good pitch from Elms. His first strikeout of the day. And that's going to bring up Carter Moberly. Moberly, two for three on the day. Has an RBI double, an RBI single, and a run scored. That one low and inside. One and oh the count. Mobley skies this one on the infield. Fleming calls for it. Makes the catch. The second out of the inning. That's going to bring up Jake Williams, the third baseman for the Panthers. One for three on the day with an RBI single. Also has a ground out and a fly out. Pitch low and inside. One and out. Swing and a miss. One and one now the count. Gonna be hit out towards left field. Lente is there. He'll make the catch, and it's a one, two, three inning for Austin Elms. No runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left on base. So we head to the seventh inning. E Town on top, 11 to 2 over North Harden. They're gonna have to put some runs on the board to continue this ball game. We'll be right back with the seventh inning action. Welcome back to John Harden High School for tonight's semifinal action of the 17th District Baseball Tournament. It'll be 2-3-4 in the Trojan lineup. Caleb Riffle to the plate, swinging a miss. Reed Sherrard stays on the mound for the Panthers. After Riffle, it'll be Manny Wimberly and then Travis Harper. Curveball low, evens it up at 1-1. One That'll be fouled out of play. One and two now the count. Riff on the day, he's one for two, or one for three, sorry, has an RBI single. This will be hit out towards right field, slicing away from the Panthers, running on it as Moberly dives. Doesn't get it, the ball just landed in foul territory. That was a long run for Moberly. And when you dive like that, one of the things that happens, you can knock the breath out of you. 
Uh, if your pitcher smarty stays off the back of the mound and waits for you to walk back to your position, I think Gerard wants to get back to pitching. Count remains one ball, two strikes. Moberly still not to where he wants to line up. Now he squares around right as Sherrard delivers the pitch. And there's strike three in the dirt. Estes will clear out, throws it down to Jennings for the first out of the inning. That's going to bring up Manny Wimberly. Wimberly one for three on the day with an RBI single. That was the 10th strikeout of the day for Reed Sherrard. Swing and a miss. 0 and 1. I want to go all the way to the backstop. Evens it up at 1 and 1. That one ripped. And that will be the second base hit of the day for Manny Wimberly as he will round first. So Wimberly now two for four on the day. Travis Harper now to the plate. Harper 0 for 2 on the day with two strikeouts. He was, he did reach when he was hit by a pitch. Ball outside, snap throw down, little high. Jennings knocks it down. Wimberly will stay at first. Fouled straight back. Wimberly with an average lead away from first. That's in there for a strike. One and two now, the count to Harper. Ooh, this one's hit high. Hooking foul, running over, chasing it as Hayner, and makes the catch in foul territory for the second out. And the Trojans are down to their last at bat and last out. Coming to the plate will be Jackson Linte, the right fielder. Linte 0 for 3 on the day. The pair of strikeouts and a fly out. And Chase Greenwell now heading to the mound. And they are going to pull Sherrard. I don't know what the pitch count he was on, if that's what it was, or they just want to get somebody district tournament play. So we're going to have a pitching change. Coming in will be number 21, Hayden Willett. This will be the 18th appearance for Willett. Has a 4-0 record on the season, three saves. ERA of 1.58, 30 strikeouts to just eight walks in 26 and two-thirds innings. And it could be he hasn't pitched in a week in a game and they want to get him some action. A little surprised they didn't run him out there for the entire seventh inning. Lefty says he's ready to go. So Manny Wimberly at first base with two outs. Jackson Linte strolls to the plate.
pitch in, actually gets away from Estes and Wimberley will head down on the wild. So it's going to be a pass ball. And even for a catcher, it's difficult to see the ball coming from a new pitcher. He's the same window Reed uh, Sherrard throws out of. And now Willett in the game, and he throws left-handed, and he has a different slot angle for his arm. It didn't look low or on the ground low. That ball hit to first base, and that'll do it. The line out. There were no runs on one hit, one runner left on base, and no E-Town errors in the seventh. It closes out the ball games. E-Town victorious 11-2 over the North Harden Trojans. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. Blue Ribbon Renovations, offering 0% interest and no payments for 12 months on most home improvement projects. Monell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff. E-Town Exterminating is a locally owned family-run pest control company. It's been serving the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976. And West Point Bank, let us help make life simpler. Hometown banking made simple. We're going to stick around. We're going to have the presentation of the all-tournament team. It'll be two players off of the North Harden Trojans. They will join Larry McKnight from the John Harden Bulldogs, along with Joe Smith and Isaiah Morrison of the Fort Knox Eagles. Again, North Harden, or sorry, North, well, North Harden will finish the season 19-18 and 18 on the year. For the Elizabethtown Panthers, they improved to 26-11, and 11, and they will meet tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. against the Central Harden Bruins. And so it's all the congratulations complete up on the field. Now turn it over to our PA announcer for the announcing of the all-tournament team. For your North Harden Trojans, uh, all-tournament selection, number four, Jose Resto Santos. Jose Resto Santos into the all-tournament team. And also number 14, Manny And Wimberley. Manny Wimberly into the all-tournament team as well. So they join, again, Morrison and Smith from Fort Knox and McKnight from John Harden. It's been a long day here, two semifinal district tournament games. We do want to thank all of our students that make this production possible. For all of them, I'm Bobby Thompson saying so long and good night.